and welcome to the online service of Bakersteel Baptist Church, Sunday the 8th of November 2020. Today is Remembrance Sunday and throughout the service this morning we'll be having helpful moments to help us focus around Remembrance Sunday and at 11 o'clock we'll be observing a two-minute silence. I'd like to open our service this morning with a couple of scripture verses, the first one being Psalm 121 verses 1 and 2. Now, a quote from the Bible which says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And this morning in our time of worship, I'd like to encourage you to lift up your eyes to the Lord this morning and know him to be your very present help. Psalm 46 verse 1, the psalmist wrote, God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. And I pray this morning that you'll be encouraged by a time of gathering and worshipping together online, that you'd find God to be your refuge, you'd find God to be your strength and a very present help. Talking about the Lord being a very present help, we are going through a very present situation again here in the UK, going through our November lockdown. And during this time, I pray that you'd find the Lord to be your strength, your peace, and your comfort. We're going to worship together this morning. Our first song is going to be led by Stefan and the team, a song called Remembrance. And from there, we're going to flow into a song led by Toby, declaring the greatness of our Lord. Before we worship together, let us pray together. Father, as we gather together online, I thank you, Lord, that you are with us. I thank you, Lord, that we can trust in you. I thank you, Lord, that we can look far above all earthly powers and principalities, and we can look to you, and we can put our trust and our hope and our confidence in you. Lord, as we gather online as a church this morning, I pray, Lord, that you'd be blessed by our worship, and I pray that your Holy Spirit would be at work in miraculous ways in every life and every family represented here. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, as we worship together, let's trust that the Lord would be at work in miraculous ways in all of our lives. Let us worship.
body crucified to make me whole again. I will recall the car pour out in sacrifice to trade this innocent for your new covenant. Every heart that 
always a very powerful moment when the church gathers, even online, to worship the Lord together. And how wonderful to know that we can live our lives in remembrance of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, our precious Lord Jesus Christ. And to know that it's His breath in our lungs and that it's His grace and it's His mercy that carries us. Church, we're going to pray together right now. You may have pressing needs in your own life this morning. During this time, I encourage you to lift them before the Lord. And we're also going to pray for our world at this time. So Father, as we gather as your people this morning, as this service goes out into the lives and homes of people. I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would bring peace and comfort and strength. And we thank you for your grace that carries us. We thank you for your grace that is sufficient. And Lord, as people have their own needs and issues that they are facing today, I pray that in this moment, everyone will be able to present them to you. And we thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. And we thank you for all your power that we can trust you to be at work in every life, in every circumstance, and in every situation. We also think of our world, Lord. We think of today being Remembrance Sunday. And we remember, Lord, sacrifices made for the good of many. And ultimately, Lord, we look to Jesus the one who made the ultimate sacrifice for us all. And may we live our lives in remembrance of what Jesus has done for us. Lord, we also lift our country up before you at this time as we go into another lockdown. And we pray, Lord, that you would be with people. We pray, Lord, that you would minister into the lives of humanity. And I pray, Lord, that even during this time, that believers and that your church would rise up in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray this all now in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, we're now going to gather around our giving. And to help us do that, we're going to be having Tony speak to us today. And after that, there's going to be a short video clip on Operation Christmas Child, the shoebox appeal. And like mentioned to you last week, this year we're going to be focusing on online giving that will have direct and very real results in a real world. So two video clips coming up now for you to be looking at. Good morning, everyone. Just here to remind you about the offering. Psalm 24 says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So can I encourage you at this time to continue with your regular giving as an act of joyful worship. At this time we are continuing to raise funds for the thank offering for another couple of weeks and just to remind you that 90% of that will go to the church building fund, 5% to the Baptist Minister's retirement fund and 5% to Christian Witness to Israel. So whether you're giving as part of your regular tithe or to the thank offering, please do so via bank transfer, by standing order, and by using the donate button on the church website. Thank you and God bless. Every year we send millions of shoeboxes filled with gifts to children in over a hundred countries around the world to show God loves them and delivering good news of great joy. But what if you don't have time to shop and pack a shoebox? It's now easier than ever to pack a shoebox in four simple steps. Step one, go to shoeboxonline.org.uk. Step two, choose who you want to pack a shoebox for. Step three, add toys to your shoebox. Step four, personalize your box, add a photo of yourself and pay for your gift. And all the toys and gifts are packed and sent for you. Thank you for partnering with us. We hope that through our work, children will come to know how much God loves them. Get started at shoeboxonline.org UK.
Thank you to Tony for encouraging us around our giving this morning and also for reminding us about the thank offering. There's a whole host of information about our church available online and why don't you visit our website after the service to find out more about us. Folks, right now we're going to be entering more of a time of focusing in and leaning into the remembrance part of our service this morning. To help us do that, we've got a very special video presentation which I pray will really touch your heart this morning. And from that we're going to flow into a two-minute silence. And during that two-minute silence, I invite you in your homes to stand together to honour that two-minute silence. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I'm making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. in our empire, and indeed throughout the world, except in the abodes of the guilty, goes out to the British airmen, who, undaunted by odds, unwearied in their constant challenge and mortal danger, are turning the tide of the world war by their prowess and by their devotion. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few.
that rugged cross my salvation where your love poured out over me now my soul cries out hallelujah praise and Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from 1 Peter 1 verse 10 to 12. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told to you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels have longed to look into these things. Now our dad is going to preach. Thank you Ruby and Rain for bringing us the scripture reading this morning. Today on Remembrance Sunday we find ourselves looking at the very meaningful topic in the Bible this morning of salvation. As many of you who know who have been part of our services online, you'll know that for now we are in the book of 1 Peter, following a series in 1 Peter. And today we find ourselves in 1 Peter chapter 1, 10 to 12, which is about salvation. Salvation is a major theme of this letter. Peter never allows us to lose sight of the priority of this salvation through Jesus Christ. And this is what I'm talking to you about today, the priority of our salvation. This is the only place in the Bible where angels and prophets are mentioned together. And that's fascinating because we know that the Bible has much to say about angels. We know that the Bible has much to say about prophets, but only here do we have them in the same text. And here is the flow of this passage of scripture. The prophets predicted the coming of Jesus. The apostles and early church preached Jesus to everyone. The angels longed to understand the salvation that Jesus brings. And we know what prophets never knew, and we experience what angels wish they knew. It was this message that Peter proclaimed to the Sanhedrin, 
the Jewish council, when he and John were arrested for preaching about the resurrection of Jesus. And we find that account in the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 12. And there Peter declared to the Sanhedrin, and I'll quote from the Bible, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. It is of this salvation that Peter now writes, and he shares two important truths concerning salvation. The first truth is the following. This salvation was spoken by the prophets. That's the first truth we're looking at this morning, and we find that in 1 Peter 1 verses 10 to 12. This salvation was spoken by the prophets. Long before the birth of Jesus Christ, the prophets were inquiring about this salvation and the prophets were searching for this salvation. The Holy Spirit revealed to them the coming of the salvation. They longed for it to take place within their lifetimes. And yet it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but rather us who were born in later generations. They testified long before Christ's birth and his suffering concerning the glories that were to follow his death and resurrection. For example, Isaiah prophesied concerning the suffering of Jesus when Isaiah wrote in Isaiah chapter 53 verses 3 to 5. And I quote from the Bible, talking about Jesus. And remember this is a prophecy. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took upon our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we were healed. So there we see that Isaiah prophesied concerning the suffering of Jesus. In contrast, the psalmist writes about the glory that will be revealed in Christ. And we read that in the Bible. In the Psalms, Psalm chapter 16, verses 9 to 11. And I quote from the Bible. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. We see the prophets were called not only to minister to their contemporaries, but they came to understand that they were sharing prophecies which would be a source of instruction and blessing for future generations. And today, on Remembrance Sunday, we think about generations. We think about this generation that benefits from the sacrifices of previous generations. We think about the generation that fought in the wars so that the future generations can have the freedoms that we have today. So as we lean into God's word today, firstly, we see with salvation being central that firstly, this salvation was spoken by the prophets. Now in verse 12, secondly, we see this salvation is a heavenly message. This salvation came by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. It is a message which is eternal. It has been good news to every past generation which has received it. And it shall continue to be good news to this generation and to future generations which shall receive it until the coming again of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I need to say, that it is difficult for our minds to conceive just how unusual it is for a message to have eternal qualities. 
for it to be good news, not just for one people or one generation, but for all peoples and for all generations. Let me attempt to illustrate this fact by asking you to think about the front page of your daily newspaper. Your first challenge would be to find any good news. However, the major challenge will be to recognize the temporiness of the relevancy and urgency of today's headlines. By tomorrow, new developments will take place and will replace those things that seem so urgent to us today. Within a few weeks, most of the news will be largely out of date. And if you were to save that newspaper for many years, it will have historical value and your grandchildren may enjoy reading about the olden days. But it will have very little contemporary news value in the future. But the message of salvation and the focus of our scripture this morning being the message of salvation is always relevant. It is always urgent. It is appropriate to every generation. It is appropriate to every culture and it is appropriate to everyone. This is for everyone. It is a heavenly message brought by the Holy Spirit and will never become outdated. This salvation has come not merely from the mind of man, but from the Lord himself. In fact, it is a marvelous message that even the angels of heaven desire to look into it. Can you imagine that? The angels of heaven desiring to look into this message of salvation. The angels are in heaven, we know, are in the presence of the glory and the presence of the majesty of Almighty God. We read about that in the scriptures. Yet they long to look into this message of salvation that we have experienced. Yeah, in scripture, the words look into in the Greek is actually quite marvelous. Look into actually means to stoop down to take a peek. To stoop down to take a peek. The angels of heaven want to take a peek at this wonderful salvation which has been declared by the prophets and revealed by the Holy Spirit and is available for all who will receive it by faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. The writer of Hebrews summarizes the situation when he poses the following question in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3. And I read from the Bible. How shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. You may ask. Why would the angels marvel at our salvation? Well, the answer is quite clear. There are no saved angels because salvation is not for them. Salvation is for us. Jesus Christ died to redeem fallen men and women, not the angels. Only human beings can experience redemption. This is the good news for all humanity. We alone, of all the creatures in the universe, can experience the wonders of God's saving grace. This fascinates the angels and causes them to ponder the mysteries of salvation they do not share. Yeah, in Peter's message, it is made clear. God loves you so much, the angels are amazed. They know very little about experiencing what we have experienced in terms of grace and mercy and forgiveness. They've never experienced new life, the new birth, regeneration, or the wonders of being delivered from sin. That which we have experienced in Jesus, and this is what we have experienced in Jesus, the angels never knew and will never know in the way we know it. In this way, perhaps we could say that we are more privileged than they are 
in terms of salvation. Yet, here is our greatest sin. Our greatest sin is taking for granted what God has done. Those things that cause the angels to rejoice, and Luke 15 verse 10 says that even one sinner who comes to repentance cause the angels to rejoice. So those things which cause the angels to rejoice, our sin is we take for granted. If we stand back, we can see the whole passage clearly. What the prophets prophesied but could not understand, what the angels wonder but could not experience, we understand and we experience every single day of our lives. We could therefore say that we are thus more blessed and more privileged than the prophets and the angels. We live in a time of prophetic fulfillment. We have privileges even the angels don't have. We are privileged beyond our dreams. In conclusion, Jesus is the meaning of history. History truly is his story. Salvation is the purpose of history. And by salvation, I'm talking about salvation in the larger sense of all that God intends to do to bring redemption to this planet. Salvation is the story of the greatest rescue mission in the history of the universe. It's about God sending His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross and to rise again from the dead and then offering forgiveness and freedom to all who will believe in His name. And it's about God's plan to establish the church around the world as a means by bringing His light into this world. We are therefore such a blessed people in history. We know things the prophets never knew. We experience salvation the angels never experienced. We know Jesus Christ and therefore we understand history in a way that would otherwise be possibly lost. Let us discover the very thing Peter was talking about. Let us realize how privileged we are to know Jesus Christ. Let that lead us to talk about him. Whenever our hearts are gripped with the enormous privilege of knowing Jesus, no one needs to tell us or remind us to go out and make disciples. No one has to tell us to evangelize. In fact, I'd like to say when our hearts are gripped with this enormous privilege of knowing Jesus, no one will be able to stop us spreading the good news of Jesus. For all who receive this great salvation, all who receive the salvation are blessed. It brings joy unspeakable. It is full of glory and it promises eternal life. During this service, we have reflected upon the sacrifice of many to make life possible for us today. And at the conclusion of the service, we now focus on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ to make eternal life possible for us and to make salvation every day possible for us. If you've wandered away from the Lord, perhaps this morning, as we remember, you could recommit your life to the Lord. If you've never given your life to Jesus, Perhaps this morning, as we remember this great salvation, the priority of salvation, you could make Jesus the priority of your life and give your life to him. We can do that now in a prayer. Would you follow me in a prayer? Dear Jesus, thank you that you love me. Please forgive me a sinner. I believe you died on the cross and rose again from the dead. Thank you that you did that for me. I remember your sacrifice. And today I invite you into my life as my Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, folks, the Bible says that when one sinner repents, 
the angels in heaven rejoice. So if you prayed that prayer this morning, the angels in heaven rejoice. And if you'd like to let us know that you've prayed that prayer here at the church, we would consider it a privilege to pray for you and send you something to read after the service. Why don't you head over to our website and click on I have decided. We're going to conclude our service with a hymn led by Toby called It Is Well. Let us sing together.
thank you for joining us and gathering with us online this morning. For the updates about our church, head over to our website, bhbc.org.uk, or follow us on our Facebook page. Look forward to gathering again next week online on our YouTube channel. Now for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Amen.